Hey everyone, Steve here again uh, with another Unity Asset Store review. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the Cave and Dungeon Toolkit by Walt WW. This uh, particular asset retails for $65 uh, at the time of writing this, um, $65 USD, and uh, I think that that is a, you know, very, very good um, value. So let's go down the my four review criteria, my overview. Uh, the quality, as you'll see in a little bit, is is very good. So that obviously passes. Um, this asset uh, supports all three ren uh, <laughs> all three rendering pipelines: uh, HDRP, URP, and built-in. Um, it is designed for HDRP. I have it running in uh, built-in, I believe, is either built-in or URP specifically because the documentation that the developer provided um, with the actual asset says that it takes a little bit of extra work to get U uh, URP and, and uh, um, built-in working. <clears throat> and and, it's, and it was meant for HDRP out of the box. So naturally, I wanted to give it a shot and see how much uh, effort it took to get uh, URP or built-in working. And I am very pleased to say that it uh, <laughs> did not take much. Uh, there were a couple of things I needed to tweak. Um, and it, it the developer lays it all out in the documentation very, very well. So anybody who is able to read should be able to follow that. So while the quality is intended to be HDRP, I'm not running it in an HDRP specifically for that reason. So it's gonna look a little lower quality, understand that the fidelity can be ramped, can be ratcheted up quite a bit. Uh, modularity and workability, it's an incredibly modular um, set of assets. Uh, as you'll see from, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of demo scenes that you'll see on the bottom. Uh, we're only going to go through a few of them, but when we go to the asset manifest, when I'm showing off the handful of scenes that we're going to look at, uh, when we go to the asset manifest, remember that that small amount of assets is able to make all of this stuff that you see, and it looks all pretty unique. So, yeah, modularity and workability, totally 100% pass. No question there. Uh, support and serviceability. Um, I have I didn't really have to contact them, um, uh, so I don't have a lot of um, I don't have a lot of uh, things to say about that. However, uh, they do provide they do have a link to their website, which on their website it gives a direct um, an actual direct email address. So uh, you should be able to get a hold of them. Um, you know, with any questions that you have. So I'm going to give, I'm going to pass it on that as well, just because the links are there. Seems like, you know, seems like they're active. And value, so for 65 bucks, I actually think this is an incredible pack. Um, the amount of stuff you can do with it is is very robust, and I think that it's worth every penny of that 65 bucks. If you can get it on a discount and a sale, well, even better. So we are going to jump into the gameplay here. Um, there's a camera that's set up for it. We're not going to use that. I did just drop in my uh, standard first-person controller, but for some reason the other UI elements are still there as well. So whatever, we're not going to deal with that. Um, just know that that's why that's up in the upper left-hand corner. So right out of the box, all of the parkour and free riding stuff works the um the uh what's it called the grappling hook also works but i'm not going to show that off um necessarily right now so i'm just going to hop down here so there's a bunch of wonderful little sliding obviously works a bunch of cool little tunnels and stuff different options to make like large cavernous tunnels, free fall rooms, if you will, and then, you know, offshoots here. So we're going to go down here. Uh, 
we're not going to explore all of the tunnels because there's a lot of like similarities and maze like stuff we're just going to go down to the next area in here and sort of look along the way so you've got torches so we are going to then drop down this little cavern here Boop. and this is a dead end here a lot of dead ends in here which is why we're not gonna we're just gonna go through the meat and potatoes portion there are a number of um, uh, particle effects like this so you got some snow falling when we get into one of the main caverns you're gonna see some uh, fog particle effects and some uh, god rays and stuff like that um, so we're in that main cavern now so this is a good time to just kind of do a quick pan again if this were running an HDRP it would be even more graphically pretty but I really want to test that other stuff and just see how well it uh, worked so I'll just do this here obviously my grappling hook still works and again just dragging and dropping so here's that light fog effect that rolling fog effect you got your god rays and snow up here these are all individual uh, assets with the like ancient looking characters on them fall down here larger cavern out here uh, oh well <laughs> so we got some chains and some prison type stuff here well you got to see a slicing I guess <laughs> oh come on there oh, no well okay we'll try it this way <laughs> there we go ah, there we go so uh you got lava you got little uh, i'll try this here little like hidden areas up here um that you know again just use the same core set of assets that will go over in the asset manifest uh cages there's a round cage somewhere uh somewhere as well you got some scaffolding and all that oh, scaffolding and all that <laughs> We'll look at that stuff in the asset manifest as well. Um, these guys are independent, so I'll show the prison, the prison, um, the prison uh, scene down at the bottom in a little bit. You'll see some of that stuff. So, got some rock uh, uh, furniture and stuff like that. And then when we get out here, it's going to be the end of this particular scene. But that really did a good job of showcasing all the stuff that this, like all the core stuff that this asset has to offer. So let's pop out here. I didn't put the uh, character controller on some of these other ones. So we're just going to do a quick fly through of a couple of them. Um, do, the, do the underground and you'll see how you can modify them with moss and stuff like that. Uh, there's built-in functions for that into the asset itself. I did turn lighting off here because there's a, you'll see, uh, oh, it's going to take a minute to bake, but there's a lighting issue in URP and, uh, URP and built-in that is one of the things that he mentions, or I think it's a he, that one of the things that the developer mentions that you have to do some extra stuff with. So that's why I have lighting off in these other scenes. So the prison scene here, so he built the, he used the, and you'll see this in there, but these are just individual, like essentially bar walls and ceilings uh, that they built out of prison with. So here's that back that I mentioned where they just rotated and I don't remember if there's one in here, there's not one in here, but um, they just rotated that and put it on the stone bench and you'll see that in a little bit. All the uh, chest the singular chest that's in here is modularized although it's not there we go so obviously you can click on these independently and break down the different uh parts of it move them rotate them whatever you need um 
we are all of these are the same they're just different versions of them so let's look at the sand one I guess it's just re it's just a recolored version so kind of showcasing that you can do quite a bit with the assets uh, you know make them look unique and all that and as long as you're being creative about how you play stuff uh, you can do a lot of really cool really cool stuff with it so let's hop into the asset manifest um, uh, scene here and we'll just kind of go over so so they do have a set of ice uh, 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 cave pieces and then a set of non ice cave pieces <clears throat> I think the reason for that is that if you'll notice the ice ones all have this like shine on them kind of like you know when you have ice on stuff so these are all the same set pieces as over there. These just have that that ice shine on them. Um, so like, so I'm not going to focus on these ones. Let's go over here and kind of explore these ones, I guess. So <clears throat> go over there. So that really big, um, that really big room that I started in, uh, that large like chimney room to the sky that was made up of a lot of these just put in a like sort large circle um and then they stuck a few of the these smaller rocks in creative places and stuff like that and um <clears throat> that's how they built that out uh so um Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm trying to remember which ones are the. So that's how they kind of built the walls. They just built those sections around that and then filled in the gaps. I can go back in there and show in the editor in a second. But <clears throat> you've got a couple of larger wall pieces that are more edge pieces. So if you notice, um, use those for that you've got some plat some platform pieces you've got a couple more platform pieces over here that they use for that and in some cases they just ramp up the scale um, obviously you've got some like larger uh, not stalactites or stalagmites I forget what these are called but they're essentially like you know middle middle pieces <laughs> call them that uh, accent pieces. Uh, you've got a few of the more rigid ones and you've got square ones that you can kind of make platforms out of and stick some of these guys on and make you know make them look more creative. Um, lots of different rock options. <clears throat> you've got the sort of pebble clutter over here. Same thing with the ice ones. And then over here <clears throat> we've got all of the... so there's a few different chests. Like I said, all of these are independently, uh, you know, movable and editable. Um, a few different things that you could put, like, you know, just a bunch of level clutter, we'll say. Uh, here's that round cage that I said before. Here are the, ca here are the cage walls. <clears throat> um, and then to make the ceiling, you just are going to shrink that down and flip it, you know, like 90 degrees. Um, <clears throat> so here's the walls that they use to make all those temples. Again, like, like I've said in some of my previous videos, I like this approach because it's a very less is more approach, right? You can really be creative with your level design without having to, um, have a bunch of just a, a ton of unique assets. You have these more, you know, standardized assets and you can really, do some cool or not standardized but do you have these sorts of assets that are modularized in an intelligent way and then you can just do a lot of really cool stuff with those um, and then you got some bridges and some scaffolding and stuff like that uh, so also good for those sorts of um, uh, this sort of uh, you know asset and I also like that the scaffolding is also modular so you can build your own scaffolding system some of the assets that i've uh reviewed before they are not in fact uh, uh modular like that 
So we'll hop back real quick before we end this. We'll hop back into the um, big scene, as it's called, and we'll just look at um, how they did some of this stuff. So <clears throat> bear in mind those those uh, uh, curvature pieces or those you know curved pieces. And we'll go on the outside here actually. Uh, actually, no, we won't. we'll go on the inside. Let's see if I can. There we go. Nope. So, they just stuck a bunch of these together, and then they creatively stuck these more accent-y pieces like this on top of it. Um, <clears throat> same kind of goes for these. They built They built these tunnels in the same way. And then for these down here, you saw the flat pieces. They just put the, the flat floor pieces in the asset manifest. They put those down and um, for the floor and for the ceiling. And they just used the, the curved ones for the, for the walls. And then they just put little, they just creatively put these. <laughs> it's going to be a pain in the ass here. But just like down there, they, were put, they put these. Yeah, it's going to be a pain. They put these sorts of guys, uh, of course, this is going to be a pain too. They put these sorts of guys, there we go, those sorts of accent pieces uh, all around and just pretty it up that way. Um, so, yeah, if, if you are a good level designer, this sort of asset allows you to really, really get creative with how you build cave systems and stuff like that. Um, I like to see modularity like this. I've talked about it in the past. I'll probably talk about it many times in the future. But uh, yeah, this this sort of asset um, really, I think, is worth the money because of that. With that smaller amount of individual prefabs, the way that they're modularized out, you can really do a lot of cool stuff with. So uh, anyways, uh, if you don't have this asset yet and you're going to buy it, consider using the link in the description. Um, if you uh, do have the asset and you like it or don't like it, feel free to you know hit me up in the comments and tell me what you don't do or don't like about it. Um, and if you have any questions that I can answer about it, feel free to also hit me up in the comments. Uh, I got a lot more of these coming, as I've said many times in the past, so keep an eye out, and I will see everyone in the next one.